Thanks for joining us. Um, this is the March 2024 iteration of the monthly seminar on physical genomics. My name is Benjamin Keen. I'm Senior Program Administrator at CPGE, which is a transdisciplinary uh, research center here at Northwestern University. Um, mission of CPGE is to study the structure and function of the genome through the convergence of super resolution imaging, uh, modeling, computational genomics, biology, and artificial intelligence. The mission of our center is to develop new strategies for the treatment of disease and the reversible engineering of living systems, and to train the next generation of scientists and bioengineers. You can learn more about our research and our training programs at physicalgenomics.northwestern.edu. We also have a YouTube channel, which has an archive of all these public lectures that we organize. Um, we're on Twitter, X, and Instagram as well. So you can follow us on those and see all of our updates. Um, this month, we are very happy to welcome as our speaker, Dr. Pietro Barrico. He is a postdoctoral fellow at NYU Grossman School of Medicine in Dr. Eva Hernando's lab. Uh, Dr. Barrico's research aims to understand how different levels of gene expression, regulation, including 3D chromatin organization, transcription factor activity, and epigenetic modulation of non-coding RNAs can drive melanoma phenotypic plasticity uh, underpinning tumor initiation and progression, which is gonna be what today's talk is about, I believe. Uh, Dr. Barrico, it's an honor to have you as our speaker this week. Um, for our listeners, you can type in questions during Dr. Barrico's talk, or we'll just have a Q&A session at the end. Um, so either way you wanna do it. And without any further ado, I think Dr. Barrico, we can turn the floor over to you and get started. Thank you so much for joining us today. So uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm uh, very, very excited to, to present uh, my work. Uh, I wanna thanks uh, a lot, uh, uh, Dr. Bachman, that uh, uh, really um, allowed this, uh, uh, this to happen. So um, without any further, uh, um, uh, time time loss <laughs> i would say i will start my my presentation so as uh, um, my my main uh, uh, focus in research is trying to understand how uh, uh, melanoma plasticity occurs uh, uh, both in uh, using different uh, com uh, computational tools so uh, today i'm going to talk to you about uh, how 3d chromatin uh, can be in, uh, essential during the, this uh, process so uh, our model of study indeed is a cutaneous melanoma. So uh, uh, it arises from the uh, uh, malignant transformation of uh, epidermal melanocytes, which reside in the epidermal dermal junction in the, of the skin. So following uh, uh, UV, uh, wait, I have a problem with the, uh, okay, yes. So following the uh, chronic sun damage exposure, uh, melanocytes then they transform uh, in uh, malignant uh, tumors, which uh, uh, it's followed by constitutive activation of the Marcanis pathway. So we have uh, uh, different uh, oncogenic driver, for instance, NRAS, BRAF, uh, or the uh, concomitant loss of NF1 or uh, P10. So uh, in this uh, phase, uh, uh, we have a radial growth phase expansion. So the, the cells start to expand uh, horizontally in this uh, epidermal uh, dermal uh, uh, layer. And then uh, they start to invade uh, the dermis uh, to become uh, more invasive. What has been shown is that uh, uh, in, this, in this process, uh, uh, cells already acquire uh, high heterogeneity, which is uh, which, uh, can be depicted by single cell uh, transcriptomic technology. And uh, uh, this, uh, this process can be uh, observed both in the primary tumor, but also in the uh, formation of metastasis. Uh, as well as uh, upon uh, first line treatments uh, against these malignancies, which is composed by Marcanese inhibitor or immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, which uh, um, uh, they have an initial effect, but then these uh, inevitably select uh, the presence of uh, uh, subclones with different phenotype that then they will drive uh, uh, relapse. So, uh, this uh, process of uh, uh, melanoma plasticity can be summarized in this scheme on, uh, on top uh, right. So we have different states uh, that are, uh, uh, they bear uh, uh, um, different uh, biological properties, uh, 
so let's say hallmarks uh, of cancer and uh, their uh, uh, existence or their uh, switch uh, depend uh, have been uh, uh, mostly associated with the activity of two main uh, gene regulatory network uh, driven by uh, the, the lineage specific factor MITF uh, or the uh, AP1 TED which are uh, uh, they have a, a tendency to be uh, uh, a little bit uh, mutually exclusive, but they can uh, uh, overlap. And uh, this uh, event of switch already occurs uh, in, the, in the primary tumor, so in very early uh, phases. And uh, the, the switch uh, depends uh, on the activity of these uh, transcription factors. Uh, and uh, their activity is uh, finally tuned by the tumor microenvironment. So everything that is uh, around the tumors plays an essential role in, in this, uh, this step. So we have uh, stromal cells, immune cells, cytokine, uh, the extracellular matrix, uh, the hypoxia, et cetera. So all these, uh, the combination of these factors, they finally tune uh, the, the activity of transcription factors and then these will uh, either stochastically or deterministically uh, uh, push the cells to switch uh, uh, among these uh, different states. Also, the, uh, what we know is that uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this phenomenon is mostly uh, non-mutational, so it's uh, epigenetic, because uh, we do have patients that uh, uh, they bear the same exact uh, uh, driver mutation or a, a very similar genetic makeup, uh, but then we have completely different outcomes. In, uh, in some patients, they, do, they never progress, uh, and other instead, uh, they rapidly progress. And, and also, thanks to the... Um, the, the avenue, or again, of the single cell technologies, but also the, the mouse engineer models, uh, we are able uh, to, uh, uh, to reproduce these states uh, in, uh, uh, for instance, in mouse model that only have uh, perhaps uh, two or three uh, driver mutation without any UV exposures. So we can see that they uh, uh, fairly uh, reproduce the, the existence of these states, uh, which are uh, very similar to the one find the, for instance, in human, uh, from uh, here in this case, are 22 human patients that they all have uh, different uh, oncogenic drivers or uh, uh, genetic makeup. And uh, so together with MITF and AP1, uh, uh, there have been extensive studies, uh, again, by single cell omics uh, to understand which other gene regulatory network uh, can be involved uh, uh, or can be driver uh, of this switch. Uh, and uh, uh, we they have been a success, uh, successfully identified other networks uh, and uh, um, which cooperate uh, with each other to, uh, to at least define uh, the, 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 the capacity or the hallmarks of these states. But uh, uh, this is our limitation. For now, we can only find a causative relation between, for instance, a transcription factor regulating some uh, subset of genes. But uh, we have to consider that uh, all these gene regulatory network, they, uh, I put it in, uh, in bulk uh, <laughs> um, to highlight the fact that they must respect uh, uh, chromatin boundaries. So we, uh, our DNA is packed in the nucleus uh, and it uh, is, uh, is organized in a way uh, that uh, uh, everything uh, has to, to, to be fit and uh, proper, uh, properly uh, expressed in a time and uh, space uh, uh, manner. So uh, here we have uh, one of the, the, the main complex uh, involved in this uh, folding uh, or this uh, organization of the, of, the, uh, of the genome is the transcription factor CTCF uh, that associate with the cohesin complex uh, to form uh, uh, most of these structures. So in these networks, uh, at the end, they found themselves embedded in a very complex structure which uh, uh, define uh, the, the, the probability whether a, a promoter or an enhancer can contact uh, uh, or activate or repress a gene. So they, they can inevitably find themselves uh, within a, a repressed region or, or a, 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 an active region. So um, we call this globally 3D chromatin architecture. But uh, how do we, uh, how do we uh, assess this structure uh, in, in the cells? So, we, we use the, mostly the uh, chromosome conformation capture techniques. Uh, in this case, is all versus all is called IC. So we can see all uh, the interaction in, uh, that occurs in the genome. And uh, looking at different resolutions, so in this case, we can look at, at 100 megabases, uh, we can depict uh, what are called the chromosome territories. So what has been shown by uh, many uh, 
uh, studies is that chromosomes are uh, very well organized in the nucleus. They have to occupy uh, specific regions, uh, whether they are transcribed or not. And this we can see it with this uh, heat map uh, in which uh, each, uh, uh, um, let's say, darker uh, um, uh, color in the heat map correspond to a chromosome. So you can see that they are very well uh, packed, organized. The, 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 the darker the color, the more is the, the range of interaction that occurs within uh, this uh, square. And, but also we can see that there are interactions that can occur in trans between uh, chromosomes. And, uh, but then we can look more uh, at the higher resolution. We can see, for instance, uh, the substructures in the chromosomes that are called uh, uh, compartments. They can be active uh, and they are called A or inactive B. They, uh, of course, uh, occupy a specific region in the nucleus. So we have the inactive more associated with the nuclear lamina and the, the active instead more uh, in, uh, inside uh, the nucleus. And these, again, uh, we can, we can uh, uh, see these structures by uh, IC looking at uh, uh, um, uh, higher resolution. And this, in, in this case, is the one chromosome. We see all these uh, um, patterns of uh, uh, square and triangles that uh, are uh, highlighting uh, the intensity of a cheese interaction that occurs between uh, uh, proximal or distal regions. Then uh, uh, we can look uh, even at more uh, uh, fine uh, structure that are called uh, domains. We have a uh, topological associated domain, uh, which are uh, again, all organized within each compartment. Uh, and they are usually defined by the, uh, again, by the, um, the complex CTCF cohesin. So the, the TADS uh, are uh, like uh, uh, jerarchically uh, uh, more important compared for instance to loops. So loops can be like a, a, a string of DNA that again are, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, compacted by the CTCF and cohesin complex, but uh, uh, within one TAD you can have uh, more loops. And, uh, and this uh, is the typical uh, visualization of a TAD as, uh, as a triangle. So in which uh, uh, every, um, every uh, um, uh, top of uh, the tip of the triangle correspond to the most the more uh, distal uh, interactions uh, uh, um, defining uh, uh, what is called uh, the TAD. However, uh, when we want to look instead at uh, uh, an answer promoter uh, lo uh, loops or interaction, uh, I see is not really the best, uh, the best technique because the resolution here start to become uh, more uh, uh, too much high. So in this case, we can use uh, a, a derivative of the IC, which is called the I-chip, uh, which are, we are already uh, currently using in the lab. For instance, you can see that uh, the oncogene, uh, the oncogene MIC, uh, we can uh, use uh, H3K27 to uh, capture all uh, the, the loops, uh, the interaction between uh, the promoter of MIC uh, uh, and uh, all uh, these uh, enhancer um, uh, found uh, downstream. So the, um, the, the IC workflow is quite easy. Uh, it's, uh, we basically uh, cross-link the cells uh, as they are in, uh, in, uh, in vitro. Then we have a restriction enzyme digestion that will help to gently uh, cut uh, the DNA. By adding these uh, um, uh, biotin uh, uh, nucleotides at the, at the extremities of the, the, the cuts, we can then uh, mediate a ligation and then uh, we uh, purify the, with streptavidine beads uh, these uh, uh, ligation points, uh, which then are uh, further uh, uh, shred by sonication. So at the end, what we are gonna have are the two pieces of DNA that are found distal to each other uh, with in the middle, uh, the, uh, the ligation uh, at the restriction enzyme site. And then we go through uh, uh, Illumina sequencing at per end. We need a very high depth of sequencing so usually we go between uh, uh, 500 and, uh, and 800 millions of reads per sample. In this case, we are sure that we, we have uh, we increase the probability to capture even the, the less frequent interaction in the genome. And then we go through the analysis, uh, which is uh, uh, it, it's very time consuming, but uh, uh, it, it's of course doable. And uh, so the 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 why why we are looking at 3D chromatin. Uh, in cancer, 
because uh, uh, have been already shown that uh, uh, the, the regulation in these structures, they can be a uh, driver of, uh, of tumorigenesis. So we can have, again, uh, a, um, the, a, a pathological or an oncogenic uh, displacement of uh, CTCF or coesin that can either uh, uh, promote uh, uh, or put a tumor suppressor in a, in a silenced loop, and as, uh, at the same time, we can have instead uh, a, uh, the formation of uh, an aberrant enhancer promoter contact that can uh, activate uh, uh, the expression of an oncogene. And uh, in, in, in line with this, there are already several publications that show indeed that these, uh, uh, these events are uh, essential or driver for, uh, uh, for uh, tumorigenesis. <clears throat> So in uh, the, our uh, main aims are to, to, to use uh, 3D chromatin to, to understand uh, how, uh, what happened at this level the, during a, a phenotypic switch in melanoma. But also we want to understand better the hierarchical relationship between 3D chromatin and one of the top uh, gene regulatory network that we have uh, been characterized so far in melanoma, which is the one belong to, belonging to the MIT family. So we want to see if uh, uh, corroborate the whether MITF alone can be sufficient uh, when we remove it to uh, uh, start uh, to, to prime the, the, the 3D structures uh, toward a, a, a phenotypic switch. But also we are currently, and I'm not going to uh, talk about uh, this today, uh, but uh, we are also currently trying to investigate uh, which are the regulator of uh, the nuclear topology. So uh, we know that the environment plays a key role in this switch. So we, we think that, uh, for instance, mechanical stress or the stiffness of the tissue where the, the, the cells are found may play a, a very important role in that. But also we want to, we want to study something that uh, it's kind of puzzling, uh, which is uh, we know that 3D chromatin at the end is going gonna, is gonna to regulate gene expression, right? But uh, is there a way that we can, uh, uh, we can assess whether 3D chromatin itself it's, uh, uh, has, a, has a role that is independent from gene expression? So we talk about like uh, 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 giving some type of uh, uh, chromatin structures that uh, allow the nucleus to be more flexible or more elastic, especially when we think about uh, the, the amount of uh, stress and pressure that the cells, uh, uh, the cancer cells, they, they find during the... the the step of uh, tumor progression, like uh, uh, intravasation or extravasation and their metastatic dissemination. So uh, for, uh, for this project, uh, we have a large panel of cell lines. Uh, we, we can, uh, so, so far it's very difficult to recapitulate all the states in vitro because of their probably their, uh, uh, um, the, the phenotypic instability itself, uh, but also because uh, the, 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 the transient ex existence of these states uh, that we can find in vivo, but in vitro, the cells maybe preferentially establish themselves in a specific state that is more stable. So we have, uh, in one extreme, the melanocytic uh, uh, cells. So they have a very high expression of MITF, uh, and they, they are very similar to, to the, their cell of origin, so the melanocyte. And uh, we can then take these cells and uh, we knock down MITF uh, at uh, different time points. And then we have uh, uh, cells that are intermediate because they have uh, a, a transcriptionally, they have a, a, a resemblance between uh, both melanocytic and uh, the most uh, de differentiated uh, or uh, uh, mesenchymal cells uh, that are uh, the, also the, the one uh, more invasive, um, which instead completely lose uh, the lineage identity uh, of uh, melanocytes uh, and they become more like uh, uh, EMT like uh, or. Uh, 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 calf-like, like fibroblast. So um, we started by first looking uh, uh, broadly at active chromatin. So uh, H3K27 acetylation is a, a bona fide marker of uh, uh, chroma active chromatin. So we can uh, uh, infer genome-wide uh, the distribution of uh, K27 in all these cells. And then uh, by principal component analysis, we can see that uh, indeed, uh, depending on the phenotype, uh, the cells kind of uh, uh, grouped uh, uh, together. So we have melanocytic, intermediate, and uh, more further, we have the mesenchymal. And uh, we can identify specific cluster uh, of, uh, of K27 that marks uh, active chromatin region specific of each state, uh, and uh, which are here uh, highlighted in, uh, in three different colors. 
And then we have also the different uh, time point of knockdown of MITF, uh, which uh, uh, if you can, uh, we can see uh, there is a, 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 a slight decrease of uh, the melanocytic uh, uh, active uh, chromatin markers. And then we have a progressive increase of uh, the intermediate, but also of the mesenchymal one. So we, we can see that MITF already is start to, to push the cells uh, to lose their differentiation uh, uh, markers and uh, start to adopt uh, or move toward the more intermediate or mesenchymal. And then uh, uh, we can annotate these uh, regions. And what we found in this, uh, we, we use the 1 million uh, uh, um, uh, um, regulatory elements that have been annotated by the ENCODE project. Uh, so based the, taking a large pile of cell line, they could uh, uh, identify distal enhancer, promoter, uh, proximal enhancer, promoter, or CTCF only region by looking at the different co-localization of these uh, epigenetic markers. So when we, uh, when we plot these uh, unique clusters of uh, K27 in, in melanoma cells, according to this annotation, we can see that uh, most of the, uh, the um, regulatory elements are uh, distal enhancer. In, in gray, you can see the NC, which are non-classified. We kind of expect that because uh, uh, in this study, they didn't use melanoma, melanocytes at least. So probably these uh, regions uh, correspond to highly uh, lineage uh, specific uh, uh, enhancer that are, uh, are not uh, annotated. And indeed, you can see that are, uh, probably those are, com are um, basically lost in the mesenchymal uh, in line with the fact that those cells uh, lose their identity, um, the melanocyte identity. And uh, then we look at CTCF. So I told you that CTCF is uh, one of the master regulator of uh, uh, 3D chromatin. And surprisingly, and these uh, we were not expecting uh, to, to observe this, uh, also CTCF uh, has uh, a distribution in the genome that uh, uh, reflect the state of the cells or their phenotype. So we have melanocytic uh, intermediate uh, kind of uh, close to each other and then the mesenchymal completely far. And uh, again, uh, we can see that the loss of MITF, uh, we have a slight reduction of, uh, of uh, melanocytic uh, uh, CTCF uh, uh, regions, uh, not really a, a, big, a, a big difference in the intermediate region, but then we can see that uh, really uh, uh, pallid, uh, we, have, uh, we start to gain uh, some of the peaks that are mesenchymal, it's very, very uh, faint. But when we, when we annotate uh, this uh, uh, these, uh, regulatory region of CTCF, then here we found a surprise. The surprise is that uh, looking at, again at the ENCODE uh, uh, annotation, uh, the melanocytic and the intermediate uh, CTCF peaks, uh, they fall uh, nicely, uh, part of them in the CTCF uh, uh, only uh, elements, which are probably insulator, and uh, uh, which uh, uh, basically are completely gone in the mesenchymal, uh, uh, in the mesenchymal state. What is the uh, specific, uh, what is typical of the CTCF uh, the, of the insulators is the almost the complete absence of K27. So K27 acetylation that marks uh, enhancer and promoters is not a marker of insulator. And indeed, when we plot uh, uh, the, um, uh, the distribution of CTCF and K27 in those, uh, uh, specific, uh, state specific region, we see that there is a poor co-localization of the two markers in both melanocytic and intermediate, but surprisingly, the level of K27 uh, is much higher in the mesenchymal. So suggesting that uh, probably these peak of CTCF that are uh, mes mesenchymal specific are not likely to be insulators. And indeed, uh, this is the other surprise. When we look at genome-wide, so these are all the peaks of CTCF in, in all the, the different states. We see that generally CTCF poorly co-localized with K27 in the melanocytic and intermediate. Meanwhile, in the mesenchymal, there is a kind of shift that CTCF starts to bind more regulatory regions like enhancer or promoter rather than insulators. And then we can look at these, uh, at these uh, regions more in detail and see which genes are associated to these uh, uh, peaks that are, are highly acetylated in K27. So we found a, a, a group of almost a thousand of genes that are all involved in EMT uh, process, so epithelial to mesenchymal transition. And this is the distribution of CTCF uh, uh, around the TSS of these genes. So you can see that it's really packed close to the, 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 the TSS. 
And uh, we then uh, said, okay, but uh, maybe this is just, uh, um, they can be POIS gene, uh, they, there can be, you know, a, a, a transient occupancy. What is the, the effect in transcription? Indeed, all these genes taken together are much highly expressed in the, in the mesenchymal compared to the other two states. So this is an independent validation in a, in a large panel of uh, melanoma cell lines. And, uh, and more importantly, we can also look at in vivo. So in vivo, mesenchymal uh, cells, they express uh, much highly these uh, 945 genes compared to the melanocytic uh, or uh, in this case are the starred, which uh, is a, a cluster that has a highly resembles to the intermediate. And, uh, and here again, when we remove MITF, uh, we can see that uh, within 72 hours, the uh, acetylation of K27 uh, in the histone H3 increase uh, uh, progressively as well as the binding of CTCF. So again, uh, we are seeing that the, the uh, depriving the cells of MITF start to also uh, uh, prime the, the promoters of these genes and probably which are, uh, can be essential for this, uh, for this uh, state. And again, when we look at the expression of this gene, when we remove MITF, we see that they are increasing. So um, this is really a, a, a corroboration of this uh, hypothesis that we think that uh, CTCF uh, uh, works less as an insulator in these cells, but start to probably be engaged more as a directly as a transcription factor and uh, direct regulator of genes. So now we go more in the, in the, in the structures. Uh, and so we have these uh, uh, data suggesting uh, really that there is, uh, uh, at, in, at, at least at 2D, in two dimension level, there is already a broad difference between the states. But now let's see at the at this at the in a three D perspective. So I, I told you about the chromosome uh, territories. So we can uh, look at the uh, very at the lower resolution. We can look at all the chromosomes. So these are the twenty two chromosomes. From now on, I will show data that uh, do not consider the the um, the sexual chromosome. So X and Y to avoid any bias uh, according to the nature of the cells that we used. What we observe is that uh, when we look at the uh, cheese short interactions, there is not a, a big difference between the three states. Uh, but when we look at the cheese long, uh, we start to have a significant difference between uh, melanocytic uh, with the uh, intermediate and mesenchymal. And then we also look uh, at the trans contact. So how often a chromosome can interact with each other. And uh, uh, we, we do see an increase uh, in the intermediate uh, and, uh, and not a significant one in the mesenchymal. But then when we look at the copy number variation, so we can, uh, uh, I see is also a very uh, fine uh, uh, technique to also assess structural variations in, in, the, in the genome. In this case, we use the Eagle C that has been developed by uh, Feng Yu from Northwestern. So it's, uh, I don't know if he's in the audience, but uh, uh, so every circle that you see here is uh, a chromosomal uh, translocation. So what you can see is that the, the cells that we use as an intermediate, they do have a lot of uh, genomic rearrangements. Meanwhile, we don't see these uh, in the mesenchymal. So uh, we suspect that this increase of trans can be mostly due because of this uh, uh, translocation, but the increase in the mesenchymal can be uh, actually biologically relevant. So we think that is uh, independent from, uh, from these uh, genomic events. And uh, when we look at the, at the single chromosome, this is a chromosome three, uh, we, can, we can observe a similar uh, behavior, especially I, I focus your attention on, uh, on, the, on the corner of the heat map, uh, where we can see that there is uh, an increase of intensity of these uh, cheese long uh, uh, contacts, which again, uh, are not related to uh, uh, chromosomal rearrangements as uh, you can see below in the structural uh, analysis. And now we, uh, we also did the same for SIMITF. So we can see again that removing MITF in 72 hours, we have an increase of cheese long interaction, not much of a difference in the cheese short and an increase of trans interaction. So in this case, the cells uh, is the same cell line. So we cannot, uh, uh, um, and also in 72 hours, we cannot uh, consider that this can be due to uh, genomic uh, translocations. And uh, so when we look again at the, at the uh, single chromosome, uh, 
we can see that there, there start to be an increase uh, of these uh, 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 long, uh, uh, between cheese long elements. Um, so in this case, MITF really uh, start to uh, again mimic uh, what uh, we can we can observe in intermediate uh, and in the mesenchymal cells. So then I told you that uh, uh, be beneath the, the chromosomal territories, we can look at uh, a more smaller structures. So in this case, we can look at compartments. And compartments uh, can be active or inactive. Uh, and this can be assessed uh, by integrating in the analysis the uh, K27 acetylation. So this helps, uh, helps us to address uh, which uh, region of the, the genome can be more or less active. Again, we can see that uh, by PCA analysis, uh, the cells are really uh, well cluster to each other depending on the state. So uh, even at this level of uh, um, uh, 3D uh, structures, and uh, we can indeed identify specific uh, compartments that are active or inactive uh, in each of the, the, the three states. But in this case, uh, we, we don't see, at least by um, at this level of, uh, of re resolution, we don't see an, a significant change when we remove uh, a MITF in, uh, in the cells. Even though when we look at the saddle plot, like uh, this is uh, a, a way to look uh, uh, globally how the compartments interact uh, with each other. So um, you can see uh, on, the, on the top, uh, on the bottom left, these are the BB contacts. On top right are the AA contacts, uh, and then we have uh, the AB and the AB on the other sides. Uh, so when we we use uh, as uh, a, 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 um, a zero the the melanocytic, and we move then in the intermediate mesenchymal, we start to see that there is a, a strong increase of uh, of contacts, uh, at least uh, at the level of uh, BB compartments, uh, as well as uh, in the AA and uh, in the AB as well, which uh, we, we are still trying to uh, understand what, what this biologically means, because uh, um, uh, for sure that we see a difference, but we, we, we still don't know what this really means uh, in, uh, for the biology of the cells. But again, when we remove MITF, we observe a very similar uh, phenomenon, uh, which it's very similar to the intermediate cells in which uh, uh, within 72 hours, there is a strong increase of uh, BB uh, interactions and uh, a, a loss of the AA. So uh, again, uh, we don't see a, a difference in, the, in what, uh, what become active or inactive in the compartments, but we can see that uh, MITF uh, change the way the compartments can uh, interact with each other. And then we look within the, the compartments at the TADS. So the, again, the topological association domain is where, uh, again, we have uh, CTCF and cohesin uh, at the two extremities uh, forming, uh, 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 um, forming a node that uh, uh, include a, a large uh, 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 portion of, the, uh, of genomic DNA within. Uh, and this uh, uh, loop inside contain uh, this domain, uh, this stud inside contain a multiple uh, series of loops uh, again uh, formed by CTCF and cohesin. When we call the TADs in the different uh, states, uh, we see that uh, uh, we observe a, a significant uh, decrease in the number of TADs when we move from melanocytic to mesenchymal. Uh, which instead the MITF uh, knockdown is not uh, really uh, capable of, uh, of uh, mimic this reduction. And at the same time, uh, uh, this uh, uh, decrease in the number of TADs is accompanied an increase of their size. This is kind of expected because if you think about that, the, the genome, uh, the size of the genome should be relatively uh, similar. We are uh, now the, the the whole genome has been uh, divided uh, in a less uh, chunk of TADs, and therefore their size is going to get uh, uh, bigger. We can look at the difference at these uh, structures. And this is uh, um, what, we, what, what we observe. So we can see a, uh, a, a, a kind of a, a diff, diff, big number of uh, differential TADs between uh, the, the different transitions. So between melanocytic intermediate, intermediate mesenchymal. Uh, sorry, here is gone the number uh, between melanocytic mesenchymal. But what we can see uh, is uh, we can uh, take all the TADs and now uh, uh, summarize them in this uh, in this heat map, uh, in which we have uh, the five prime borders, so one of the of the side of the the tad, 
which is the triangle, and the other side, which is the three prime. What we can see in red is everything that is gain, and in blue is everything that is loss in terms of uh, interactions. We, we can see that the, when the cells shift from melanocytic to intermediate, we have an increase of cis long interaction. Indeed, what we already uh, show, uh, I show you before uh, in the chromosomal territories, but we have a loss of uh, these short loops that probably are the one that correspond to the, 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 are the gene, the enhancer promoter loops uh, between, uh, that it suggests that there is really a change in gene expression. But when we go at the mesenchymal, we can see that there is uh, an increase of interaction outside the triangle, which suggests that there is, uh, uh, the, the, it goes along with the, 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 what we observed, that the loss of TAD or the decrease of the number of TADs increase their size. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, if the size is bigger, we, we are gonna see an increase of contacts outside the range of TADs that uh, was uh, uh, established uh, in, the, in the other states, okay? And uh, the, 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 the strength of the TADs can be measured by uh, what is called the insulation score. So the insulation score is basically uh, the, how much uh, these uh, boundaries of the TADs are strong and, and uh, defined. So it's basically uh, uh, what we see at the five prime and the three prime of the TADs. And uh, the more this uh, uh, profile is deep, uh, uh, goes down, the more it's strong. So what you can see is that uh, there is not much of a difference uh, in the insulation between uh, melanocytic and intermediate, uh, but the, in the mesenchymal cells, the insulation uh, is reduced. So suggesting that the boundaries of the TADs indeed uh, are, are start to be more like uh, shaky and they are more open uh, and they are more, let's say prone to, uh, to change their, uh, their size uh, in, in, in those cells. And when we look, uh, uh, and this can also be assessed by the inter-TAD contact. So TADs are like, a, let's say it's a, an entity, a structure that is kind of uh, isolated. So everything that uh, is inside interact with each other. So in answer, promoter, et cetera. So in theory, then the number of contacts uh, between the, the uh, even ad adjacent TADs uh, is not as great as uh, the interaction that is within a TAD. So we can assess how frequently these stats, so the, for instance, the, the, the zero one, this is the, the one as a reference, we can see how much interact with the, the one that is one next, two next, three or four or five, et cetera. You can see that in the, uh, in the intermediate cells, the, the, the frequency of interaction is not so different from the, the melanocytic, which is uh, uh, the bar uh, in, at the zero. But when we look at the mesenchymal, the, num the, the, the frequency of inter TADS contacts is much higher. So you, you can see that again, the TADS are uh, uh, more shaky and, they are, and, the, and the elements that are within a TADS, they can uh, more easily contact elements in other TADS that are in the neighbor. And we can look at the genes that are uh, within those differential TADS and as, uh, as expected, uh, and this is a good uh, confirmation of uh, also on the, on the importance of these structures in, in gene expression in this, uh, in this uh, uh, process, is that the TADS in the melanocytic cells are associated with genes involved in pigmentation uh, and uh, uh, nervous system development. These are typical uh, uh, ontological process in, uh, for these cells. In the intermediate, we have uh, uh, angiogenesis, uh, uh, secretome, uh, and uh, again, a, a little uh, bit of nervous system. And the mesenchymal, we have uh, um, cell adhesion, uh, uh, vascular development. So these are all uh, pathways that uh, have been already uh, associated with this uh, type of state. So it's kind of, uh, um, it, it's good that we can see these also uh, uh, looking at this level of, uh, of uh, chromatin. And this is just an example. These are all, uh, I show you all heat maps, et cetera, but then uh, uh, what happened really uh, when we look at the genes. Uh, so here we have the MITF locus uh, and uh, all the, 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 the neighbor uh, uh, genes. Uh, on the top of the, of the uh, one side of the triangle, we have the, the loops and the contacts in the melanocytic cells and on the bottom, the mesenchymal. We can look at the difference of these contacts and then you can see in blue, it's everything that is uh, uh, it's, uh, lost in the mesenchymal. And in red, everything that is uh, gained in the mesenchymal. You can see that these uh, structures, these loops, uh, 
we uh, around the region of MITF are lost in the mesenchymal, which indeed uh, they they very lowly express MITF, uh, and instead uh, there is a gain on the of these uh, contacts uh, that are more long range interaction uh, on the on the side of the of the of the heat map. On the contrary, uh, below we have uh, another. Uh, it's the the opposite a marker of a mesenchymal cell is uh, the receptor IXL, which is here. In the middle, you can see this uh, in red a, a strong gain of uh, of loops uh, or uh, chromatin interaction and in the in this locus, uh, as well as the formation of all these loops and structures uh, that are uh, instead now more specific of mesenchymal cells and are instead lost in the melanocytic. When we look at the same uh, uh, structures in the, in the SIMITF, uh, you can see in the heat map uh, that uh, uh, progress, the progressive loss of MITF uh, increase uh, the number of cis long interaction within uh, the TAD. Not much uh, happen outside the TAD, even though there is a slight increase uh, perhaps uh, of, uh, of uh, also uh, uh, trans con uh, sorry um, uh, inter tad connections but uh, again we have a loss of uh, of uh, short loops uh, and again of uh, long range loops uh, which resemble a lot uh, what i show you here in the intermediate cells again we can see the differential tads between all these uh, uh, three uh, time points and uh, we don't have a significant uh, we don't see a difference in the insulation score which suggests again that uh, more than the, the TAD boundaries, the difference that we see is within the TADs, so the, the contacts that occurs inside. And then we can look uh, again at the inter-TAD contacts, and indeed we don't see this uh, uh, dramatic difference as we saw before, we'll be comparing melanocytic with the mesenchymal. So uh, again, MITF uh, is in, at this level is not sufficient uh, to uh, break down uh, the, the boundaries of the TADs uh, and then allow a, uh, a, a more uh, broad uh, contacts uh, we, uh, between uh, TADs. When we look at the genes uh, that are associated with the, these differential TADs, uh, we can see uh, um, these are involved in the MAP kinase signaling or the PI3K. PI3K pathway has been associated a lot with the invasive state. So, it's kind of a, a, a good hit because again, suggests that uh, even though the cells are not switching uh, uh, completely, uh, they start to have uh, uh, to prime the expression of genes that can be involved uh, in, uh, in the, or can be relevant in the mesenchymal cells. And then uh, it's known that the MITF regulates uh, a lot of uh, cell cycle genes. And we see indeed that the, 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 the TADs that are uh, associated with the down-regulated genes are, uh, um, associated with, uh, with the cell cycle uh, or mitotic uh, genes. This is an, another example. Uh, so uh, again, the, we look at the same uh, locus in MITF and IXL beneath. Here, the difference is a little bit, uh, it's less evident uh, as before. So you can see in blue is everything that is lost uh, in the in the SI MITF uh, and in red is what is gained. So, you can see that uh, around uh, there is not uh, this uh, increase of red that suggests an increase of uh, of uh, of uh, inter tad probably contacts, uh, but rather we have uh, a, a, a reshaping of loops uh, within this region that is not as uh, uh, as strong or uh, uh, dramatic as uh, I show you before comparing the states. Similarly with the Excel. We, we really have a, a more fuzzy heat map because the differences are not really uh, uh, striking or uh, dramatic. Now we can look within the TAD, the different TADs, we can look at the loops. So uh, the loops are the, really the, the, um, these regions that contain uh, gene promoters uh, inside. So what we did is uh, we took our CTCF uh, chip seek and we integrated with the IC loop calling to be sure that uh, the loops that we observe are really uh, CTCF uh, uh, mediated. And uh, on, the, on the left, we can see that there is not uh, a, a kind of a great of difference uh, in the number of CTCF peaks uh, between the states. But then when we look at the number of loops, uh, we, we see a difference. And this difference uh, uh, show that uh, intermediate cells, they, they have a, a much a higher number of, uh, of uh, loops compared to the mesenchymal and the and the melanocytic, and that the loss of CTCF uh, 
produce uh, start to uh, increase uh, uh, slightly this uh, number of loops again we see MITF it's still like uh, uh, pushing the cells probably more like an intermediate state so this is uh, an, an aggregate peak analysis so you have to imagine that in the middle uh, are both anchors of the loops so the five prime and the three prime region everything has been stick here okay and all around uh, are the interactions uh, or or uh, the let's say the the, the yeah the, the interaction that occurs between these two anchors we use uh, we call the melanocytic loops and we see that uh, uh, in the intermediate cells we have a gain of uh, of these uh, melanocytic loops uh, which instead uh, are uh, lost uh, in the mesenchymal um, and uh, this can be quantified in this graph uh, and actually we can see that the intermediate cells have a higher number of melanocytic loops compared to the melanocytic itself but the mesenchymal instead have a, a, a significant loss of those. And when we look at the, the overall distribution of CTCF in this region, we can see that uh, there is not much of a difference of a strength of binding of CTCF here. Meanwhile, in the mesenchymal, the strength is lower. And uh, then now we can look at the intermediate loops and you can see indeed that the strength of, uh, of uh, these loops is very high in the intermediate. And kind of uh, in the neutral uh, uh, side uh, in the in the mesenchymal compared to the melanocytic, and indeed uh, the quantification show that these loops are very highly uh, specific and enriched in the in the intermediate cells. And when we look at CTCF uh, again, we have uh, not kind of similar uh, uh, strength of binding uh, between melanocytic and intermediate. Maybe intermediate is a little bit more, but again, mesenchymal uh, the binding is lower. And now we look at the mesenchymal loops. So the mesenchymal loops, uh, uh, we have uh, a, a significant increase of these loops in the intermediate, uh, and uh, the, the, this increase is also strong in the mesenchymal, but the difference between mesenchymal and intermediate is not, that, is not that evident. Okay, but what is even uh, more weird, and now uh, we, have a, uh, we have an interpretation for that, is that even though the, the mesenchymal loops uh, are, are strong in, in those cells compared to the melanocytic, the binding of CTCF still is not that uh, strong. And this conclusion is that, uh, so the intermediate cell seems to engage both mesenchymal and melanocytic loops, uh, but the CTCF uh, uh, has a weaker, uh, weaker binding in, in mesenchymal cells in general in every, uh, in every uh, type of uh, uh, state-specific loop. And what, when we remove MITF, actually we, we observe a similar phenomenon that uh, the, uh, the strength of CTCF start to decrease, uh, but uh, even at the melanocytic loops, uh, we have a, the, the, those loops start to increase uh, in, in the frequency of, uh, of, of contacts, uh, uh, even when we remove uh, this uh, transcription factor. And this, uh, uh, it's even uh, more uh, evident uh, in the intermediate loops uh, which again, we see a decrease of strength of binding of CTCF and in the mesenchymal loops. So um, it seems that removing MITF in general increase the frequency of CTCF loop in, in, in every, uh, irrespective of, the, of the, uh, the specificity of the loops uh, toward the state. And this is our final model. So we think that uh, in, the, in the, the melanocytic tats, they have a very strong boundaries, which is marked by this uh, uh, heavy uh, black line. And we have an inc a very high enrichment of uh, more short, uh, cheese short interaction. This, uh, uh, instead it's uh, in the intermediate cells, we have uh, the, the tats are kind of similar. Maybe the boundary can be different, but we, we still, this is still uh, to corroborate uh, and, but we, what we see is that we have an increase of uh, cheese longer. And in the mesenchymal, we have an increase of the size of the TADs with a very weak uh, uh, insulation and then uh, therefore boundaries and, increase, uh, and an increase of cheese long interaction. Then we can look at the loops. And the loops, uh, we have uh, melanocytic uh, loops specific of the states. And in the intermediate, uh, we found a, a higher number of loops, uh, probably because uh, they, they, or they bear both the melanocytic and the mesenchymal loops, 
plus uh, their unique loops uh, uh, of the intermediate state. And then we have the mesenchymal uh, cells that again, uh, they have a similar number of loops as the melanocytic, but they bear mostly uh, uh, specific mes mesenchymal specific loops. The loss of MITF actually is, uh, is, uh, seems, seems to push the cells more toward an intermediate-like state, but still we, we miss uh, the rest of, the, of the, the transition, which we are still, uh, we are currently investigating. And uh, when we look at CTCF, uh, the, the model uh, that we hypothesize is that uh, CTCF is very strong uh, in, the, in the loop regions, uh, in the melanocytic and in the, in the intermediate. Uh, instead, the, the binding at promoter uh, or uh, regulatory region is very weak. Meanwhile, uh, in, the, in the mesenchymal cells, we have a reduction of strength of CTCF, uh, probably because uh, these factors find themselves uh, shifting between uh, being an, ins an, an insulator or and a transcription factor driving the expression of uh, EMT specific genes. And therefore we, we, we conclude uh, that uh, the CTCF gene regulatory network uh, increase progressively uh, mo uh, moving toward the mesenchymal state. So uh, we, are, uh, we, we do have uh, several collaboration going now. One is with uh, uh, Colin Goding in Oxford. He's a, a, an expert in MITF. He knows everything about MITF and the, the TFE, the MIT family. So what he thinks is that uh, uh, when we remove MITF, uh, the other member of the MIT family are kind of compensating and binding uh, their, uh, the, 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 the motif, which is the same. Uh, and these include the, the factor TFE3 and TFEB. So we hypothesize that probably Removing also this factor can uh, perhaps push more the, this, uh, uh, this uh, transition. And uh, we already have a tool that it's, uh, uh, has been actually published recently. And uh, well, uh, we remove, uh, we're removing this protein called Gator2, which is uh, an ubiquitin ligase uh, uh, regulator. We actually, uh, uh, we are able to uh, degrade uh, all the three uh, MIT member, both MITF, TFE3, and TFEB. And is, this is really cool because uh, this can, over, um, let's say, overcome the, the need to generate, I don't know, a triple knockout cells, et cetera. With one protein, we can actually take all, uh, all the three. And then we have also an ongoing collaboration with uh, Dr. Bachman, and um, uh, we, we tightly follow his, uh, his work uh, on... Uh, on uh, uh, high resolution imaging and uh, um, me mechanical stress on the, on the cells. So we, we, we wonder whether uh, perhaps in parallel to uh, uh, inferring the function of this MIT family, applying a, a, a force to these cells, like a, a kind of nuclear stress can pro maybe push uh, even further uh, the, the system. And so uh, Bachmann's, uh, Dr. Bachmann's lab, they have uh, the, the best tool, I think, for to do that. Uh, so we, we we want to see if uh, pushing the cells uh, through a, a little fissure that kind of mimic uh, uh, what uh, the cells go through uh, during the intravasation and extravasation, this generate a, a nuclear stress uh, that can affect uh, the 3D chromatin uh, um, at different levels. So we can look uh, uh, with atomic force uh, microscopy high resolution imaging at the nuclear, the, the compartments, the one that I show you before, we can, is it possible to visualize them? And, uh, but also we can uh, perform a, a single cell IC or RNA seq to look at, at, the, at the effect before and after the migration on uh, gene expression, uh, epigenetic memory. So we want to see if uh, applying this force, the cells actually can, are able to maintain the perturbation that they, they, uh, they have been uh, uh, through. But also we can see uh, the, the phenomenon of, uh, we can see if this can push a phenotypic instability. So I show you that uh, uh, this phenotypic transition uh, depends on um, uh, many variables, but perhaps uh, 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 increasing the, 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 the stress on the cells will, will increase the instability and therefore the probability that, uh, that they will switch. And then we can also see if uh, according to the states, uh, the, the flexibility of the nucleus uh, is different. And uh, talking about single cell IC, uh, this uh, technique uh, has been uh, um, 
th th there is a specific protocol developed by our uh, neighbors in NYU. We have uh, Dr. Ifantis that uh, they already um, established a very good protocol uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, we can combine uh, the single cell IC with the single cell RNA-seq. Uh, and we want to see if uh, those uh, 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 nuclear topology uh, changes that we observe in vitro can be uh, depicted uh, or detected uh, in a mouse model. So again, uh, uh, our, our other collaborator, uh, uh, Mayumito, they developed this new uh, melanoma uh, mouse model that uh, it's more similar to uh, the, the human uh, um, uh, etiology. And, uh, but also we have an, a, an amazing collaboration with uh, uh, Iman Osman, that she's the director of the melanoma program here in NYU, that she can uh, uh, provide uh, uh, not only the intellectual support, but also the, the, the samples to perform this technique in, in actually in patients. This would be the, the I, I would say, a more uh, solid uh, proof of uh, our, uh, our model. And then uh, with this, I, I conclude uh, and I want to thank uh, my amazing mentor, uh, Eva, and uh, all my lab, uh, uh, the, the, the facility in NYU that are uh, super, uh, super excellent. Uh, um, then our collaborators, of course, uh, uh, full of ideas and, uh, and trying to help us pushing this, uh, this story a little bit, uh, I mean, I would say dramatically further. And then uh, my fellowship and uh, you for the attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the chat is open if anyone wants to type in a question or feel free to just turn on your microphone and interject also. I see some applause hands. So maybe I'll, I have a quick question. Uh, would you comment on the, uh, on which techniques you think which technique would be better to use um, in a very high resolution, whether it's a, a high chip based or it's a, a you know microchip. I'm sorry, micro uh, micro C. Micro C, yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, uh, I think it depends on the on the question uh, because. Uh, um, the, the micro C as the, or IC in general, uh, they have uh, one limitation. What we consider as an interaction doesn't mean that is an active interaction. And uh, so even, uh, um, uh, even uh, heterochromatin region, they can show this type of, uh, of uh, behavior uh, on, the, on the heat map. So we, you can see literally the loops, uh, et cetera. So I think the, the I chip, uh, is the, the best compromise uh, to uh, infer this type of uh, interaction at very high resolution, but looking uh, at uh, uh, epigenetic markers that we know are associated with, uh, um, with, the, with active chromatin. So we can be more confident that what we, the loop that we are going to see probably is a loop that uh, ultimately will lead to you know, increased expression or uh, having uh, an effect on... Uh, on an activation of gene expression, yeah. Thank you. That's so I can see a question in the chat. Uh, ten, would you mind explaining uh, I ship more? Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, the principle of I chip uh, is, uh, I can go back to the, the present in the beginning. Uh, is basically the same uh, uh, workflow as the I I C, but we add uh, uh, we add a step of I P like a chip. So let me see where is the, the cartoon. Okay, yeah. So basically, uh, we start with the uh, with the chip, and then. Uh, like a conventional chip and then we go with the, the restriction enzyme and the, exactly the same uh, uh, step that I, I, I show you here. So this has the, the advantage that uh, we are basically selecting uh, which uh, uh, region of the genome we want to perform uh, uh, the, the, the IC. And uh, it can be done with anything that uh, it's uh, 
uh, at least using uh, the, the our protocol that everything that can be targeted with an antibody. And uh, so you can look uh, for sure, yeah, at uh, methylation region or uh, heterochromatin region, uh, even transcription factors, co-activators, something that uh, um, it's bound to the directly to the chromatin for sure. Yeah, yeah. And now they are becoming very, they are more and more commonly used because again, with the IC, we can see uh, broadly what's what's going on in terms of folding and uh, interaction, but then to infer the activity of this uh, interaction, uh, you need uh, other markers. Uh, either you uh, uh, you integrate uh, ChIP-seq for uh, uh, active or inactive chromatin or transcription factor to help uh, addressing more of this question. There are also way to artificially do this. So you can, uh, uh, if you have a, a track of, uh, I don't know, um, uh, of, let's say, yeah, methylation uh, markers that is already generated in your cell. You can generate a virtual uh, IC on uh, these regions uh, that you, you call uh, and see how they, the interactions uh, uh, change uh, maybe between different conditions. But of course, uh, you will get uh, a much better resolution uh, by capturing uh, this uh, interaction directly with an antibody, so doing a, a, an eye chip. You're welcome, no problem. <laughs> Thank you, very, very nice, very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if there's no other questions, I think um, we can sort of wrap things up here. I'm just gonna show one slide that is our upcoming um, talks for the rest of the year at this seminar series. So, if you're not on our email list, feel free to join. This is um, the last Friday of every month. We'll be featuring these speakers. So keep an eye out for those invites and hope to see you join us at one of our future seminars. Thanks so much, Dr. Barrico.